Hi guys, welcome to episode number 13 of the video podcast, Me and My Dog and Some Yarn. Today is January 24th, 2014. It is a Friday afternoon and I am excited because I've had the day off. And the reason for my day off is because we have had an ice day. Um, you guys up north are going to laugh, but here in Houston, we don't experience a lot of ice. And we don't have the equipment to sand or salt our freeways and overpasses. So pretty much the city shuts down. We have not had an ice day um, since probably two years maybe I think 2011 might have been the last time so yeah I'm excited um, everyone in my company decided to stay in um, and we've had several calls um, but nothing serious so it's kind of nice we all got to sleep in um, my husband did not get to sleep in he had to actually go to work um, he works out by uh, Intercontinental Airport, Bush, Bush Intercontinental, and um, yeah, it takes him about 30 minutes to get to work. He goes in at 4 o'clock, he's there by 4.30, and he made it okay. Um, I did hear later on on the news that we had over 120 accidents on the road this morning, so I'm extremely grateful that he made it okay. And um, it's above freezing now, so everything's starting to melt, which is good. So I'm sure he'll make it home safely. So, but I have enjoyed my day. Um, I stayed in my jammies for quite a while, and I just knitted, and I watched some Downton Abbey trying to catch up. And I've had my three girls with me, Lucy and Kanga and Dottie. They've enjoyed me being home. So yeah, it's been a great day, a great three-day weekend for me. So anyways, um, I am working on a scarf for my husband. When we were in New York, he wanted me to knit him a tubular scarf, like one that he already has, uh, one that was purchased. So I decided um, it, the pattern would be pretty easy to just guess at. So what I did was I cast it on 120 stitches. I joined in the round and I've just been knitting um, stockinette stitch. I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough yarn and that worries me. Um, this yarn was purchased in New York. Um, it is a really pretty green real dark forest green. It has a little bit of black um, mingled in there with it. It's just really, really, really pretty. It's made out of cashmere yarn from Italy. Um, it did not have a label. I don't know what brand it is. But I have three skeins and so I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough yarn. This is already probably three quarters of the yarn from the first skein. So I'm really not thinking it's going to be enough. I'm just going to knit one full skein, times it by three, and see how long my finished scarf will be and then make a decision from that point. I guess that's really all I can do. but. Um, pretty simple. It's easy to watch TV or talk to you guys while I'm knitting because it's just stocking it and I'm not having to count. So this kind of project is nice and easy and um, it can get boring if you're not doing anything else while you're doing it. So this is project number one um, on the needles. Um, I have been working on a few hexi puffs. Um, I finished three Hexi Puffs um, this week since I saw you guys last. Uh, this one, and then this one, and this one. All three of these were knit um, using the yarn, um, the scrap yarn that I bought at the um, Goodwill when I found the motherload of yarn. 
So I'm putting this to good use um, with my scraps. And then uh, this one I knitted using the yarn um, from the sock head hat and Tori's um, Batkiss scarf. So I've got leftover of this, so I'll probably use that up supposed to look like a tiger and it does I believe um, and then I pulled out an old project it is let me tell you the name of the pattern it is love hearts blanket for the girl and the pattern is by Jane Ellison and it is published in the book called the Marisol collection book number six so, um, I uh, copied from the book so I could make little notations, and I haven't worked on this in a while, um, but it's pretty easy to pick up. I'm knitting it out of um, Barocco Comfy or Comfort. It's a worsted weight um, yarn. It is. Uh, 50% super fine nylon and 50% acrylic. Um, super soft con considering that it's acrylic. Uh, it is washable and I chose um, something like that for, whoops, for the purpose of you know washing it later on. Um, it, it's just little squares that are knit and garter stitch but then they have the heart in the middle they're all the same, but they're all different colors. And then you make, um, here is a tapestry needle on there. You can see how you make a little flower ever so often and put in the center of, of the quilt or the, the square. And then you put a button and it showed a heart button, but I had a hard time finding heart buttons. I might just put a clear um, you know, standard button in there, but I've got, um, so I've got green and beige and red, yellow, orange, Here's a gray, brown, you can, oops, drop my bag. You can see it's just going to be multicolor. Um, I also have purple and well, I'll just show you the whole bag. There's a purple, teal, um, pea green, real light, um, lavender, maroon, or, no, this is purple. Um, so I'm very finished, I'm very close to finishing that, so I've been working on this for several years. I decided to go ahead and pull it out. Um, count up the squares, see what else I need. I think most of the squares are knitted already, and now it's just working on little flowers. And um, they're a little bit fiddly. You make five separate petals, and then you, um, I think you hold like two or three live stitches on each one, and then gather it up. So it's not too difficult. It's kind of fiddly. I don't really care for working on the flowers, but it really makes the quilt cute. So um, you ought to check that out. It is um, Jane Ellison's, and the name of it is Love Hearts Blanket for the Girl. So anyways, I've pulled that out. I'm going to work on that, and then I'm still planning on knitting on the Quiet Continental by Boo Knits. I have not started it yet. I might start it this weekend. Um, 
I wanted to get a few things finished and off the needles before I start and try to behave myself and, you know, not jump ahead, but who am I to kid? I'm probably going to start it uh, real soon. I'm using Knit Pick Stroll Glimmer. It's fingering weight yarn, 25% um, nylon, 5% uh, Stellina and 70% super wash, super, super wash fine merino wool. And I don't know that you can see, uh, but it does have some sparkle to it. And then I bought um, some beads at uh, Be Delicious in Cypress, Texas. And they're just really gorgeous and sparkly, and I'm hoping that they're going to look like diamonds, and I believe they will. So, um, these are, I didn't mention in the last um, episode, but these are hexagon shaped, so I think they'll really catch the light and sparkle. So that's what's on the needles. And finished objects. I have one, and you, I'm wearing it. You might recognize it. It is the cowl that I've been working on. Um, it is made out of uh, Old Oak Ranch, Peruvian Angora, I mean Peruvian Alpaca. And it is really pretty and has a seed stitch on both edges. And then in the center it has eyelet. And um, I will show you guys. It's pretty long. So it goes down. Um, well, you can't see. I'm not tall enough. It goes down. It hangs pretty low. As you guys can see. And, of course, you can wear it and double. I might venture out and go to the grocery store later today. And this would be the perfect thing to wear around my neck because... It's really cold. <laughs> um, so yeah, I love it. Um, I love the yarn. And I love the pattern. And I looked it up for you guys. Um, the pattern... Oh, let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, the pattern um, is Mimi's Meek Stole. And it's by RMW Knits. That's Mimi's Meek Stole by RMW Knits and um, when we went on the yarn crawl um, it was a free pattern it was printed up special and it said Old Oak Ranch uh, stole so it took me a while to actually find the appropriate pattern and link it to my Ravelry page but I did so if you guys um, want to check that out you can go to my projects and find it there so, um, that's actually the only thing that I finished besides the hexi puffs that I've been working on. Um, but, um, I want to, excuse me, I want to go ahead and give away a bag. I have not done that in a while. And I've missed giving out prizes. Um, since I'm new at podcasting, I don't have, um, no one has donated anything for me to give away, and so sometimes it's hard for me to come up with things to give away, but I really enjoy it. Um, if any of you guys out there would like to donate something for me to give away to one of the viewers, I will be happy to do that for you and get your name out. Um, if you have an Etsy shop, perhaps you make stitch markers or project bags or uh, Notion bags. Um, if you're an indie dyer, anything to do with yarn, knitting, crocheting, I would be happy to help you get your name out there and give away a prize. So if you were, if you're interested in doing that, you can message me on Ravelry. My username is Black Horse, and I'll be happy to give you an address where you can mail something. Make sure you send a business card so I can um, show people who the bag came from, and then I will start a thread and. Um, you know, give it away as a prize. So um, this week I'm giving away a prize um, from my own stash. It's actually a project bag that I made. Um, I also sell bags on Etsy. My um, 
Etsy shop name is Black Horse Fashions, and I have project bags and um, some vintage uh, books that I have two of that I'm getting rid of, uh, the extra ones. So if you're interested in that, you can go check it out. But I'm giving this away today. Um, this is one of my um, small project bags. Actually, I only have small ones listed in my shop right now. I plan on making some bigger ones, and I plan on making some of the box um, project bags. So, you know, with the zipper. I really prefer this kind of bag because it does not have a zipper, and I'm pretty notorious for getting my yarn caught in zippers, so I prefer this kind that has um, just the drawstring, but this is a um, Valentine's bag made out of cotton. Uh, the inside is uh, coordinating and has the label inside. So I'm going to open up again. Um, I'm going to open up a thread in our in our group, and I'm going to ask you what what you're working on that would fit in this bag. And um, you must be a member of the group to enter and I will draw a winner next week. So good luck on that and I guess the next thing I'm gonna do, the, the last thing, is show you one of my vintage knitting magazines. This one is Jack Frost Styles for Men and Boys. I figured it was appropriate since it's freezing outside and since we've had some ice appropriate name, Jack Frost. Um, this one um, is volume 26 and it has a price of 20 cents. And let me see if it has a date. 1937. So 1937. And it's mostly just patterns for men and boys. There is a zip up cardigan. And a turtleneck. Oops, uh oh, my book is falling apart. That's not good. The first page fell out. I have to pick that up before Dottie steps on it. She's sleeping right now. Um, here is a cardigan and vest. Yeah, this one's really old. Um, I don't really remember where. I got this one. I believe it was an antique store. This one with a zipper. And here is a just a scoop neck neck cardigan with ribbing on the arms and the and the waist. There's two more. And, wow, this one is really brittle. I did not realize it was so brittle. Um, last page just fell off. I'm going to have to tape it up. Hang on just a moment. Let me <laughs> grab that other front. Okay, so that was Jack Frost for Men and Boys. And... I love the top hat. That's just too cute. The scarf pattern is in there. It did not show an additional pattern of this, you know, an, an additional picture of the scarf, but the scarf pattern is in there. So, anyways, um, I hope you guys enjoyed that um, little look into the past. So, um, I guess that is it for today. Um, I hope you guys have a great weekend, and um, I will see you soon. Don't forget to go into the thread and sign up for the project bag. And, um, yeah, I guess I'll see you next time. You guys have a great week, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.